Accounting for startups, setting up your model. In the previous video, I showed you, uh, I encouraged you, I should say, to start thinking in terms of what your costs might be. You, you need to get a sense of what the burn rate is so that you understand how much money it's going to take to fuel this thing until you can bring it to market. And I left you with just a very rough sketch of a template here where I said, just start listing out the items you're going to pay for. And this is, and in between recordings, between then and, the, and here, I filled in with some information. This is by no means complete. And obviously, it's going to differ from case to case. It depends. Some of you might actually rent an office space and want to work together. Um, I did some research on um, WeWork right? And, and to see what the rents were. So if I wanted to rent a WeWork space in Pasadena, California, which is near me, for um, a single person office, it would be $750 monthly. And it goes up from there to two people and so on. So I just put in here, you know, just as filler information, your numbers might change, your line items might change, but I want you to get the concept of what we're trying to lay out here. So now we have the beginnings. And the other thing I did was I just did some research for software developer salaries. And this is right about the middle of the road. It's a little higher than the median for the entire country in terms of what you'd have to pay a software developer according to salary.com. Now, you may have software developers who are going to be willing to contribute their time uh, in exchange for equity. Uh, or you may have software developers who say, look, I got bills to pay. I'd love to get involved in your project, but I need to get paid. And based on that, maybe you would pay them somewhere around the median instead of something more on the higher ends, especially in a city like where I am in Los Angeles, uh, where people do expect to get paid more than the national average in most cases. So now that we've got at least a sketch, and again, we're going to be able to expand on this. Let's just uh, let's rename this tab and we'll actually just be very little and call it sketch. Right. And now I want to add a tab. And we're going to create a timeline. So I'm going to start by listing each of these things again down here. And so we'll say item over here. And now we're going to, I'm going to set this up so that you can punch in the starting date. And I'm going to make this template available to you for those of you who um, request it. Just fill out the form on my site. Tell me you'd like a copy and I'll make sure you get it. So we're going to start a timeline. Let's just say I was starting in um, January of 2016. So you're going to punch in the first date. And I'm going to show you how to write a simple formula here that's going to let you calculate the date from there on out on a monthly basis. And we're going to need, so there's date-based formulas you can write. These are available in Excel and they're available in Google Sheets here as well. So we're going to say equals date, open parentheses, and we want the year. I always like to look at the syntax to make sure. So we need year, month, then day. So the year of whatever's to my left, comma, the month of whatever's to my left, close parenthesis, plus one. We're going to add one to the month, right? I'm laying out a monthly timeline, comma, the day of whatever's to my left. This way, I punch in the starting date, and the model figures out the starting date of each month that follows. And that way, it's dynamic, so I can start with any month beginning that I want to. So if we're doing this, I'll show you afterwards. Let's copy this out. And that gets us into 2017. Let's go a little further. Right, so December of 2017. That's perfect. So if I wanted to start it, 1117. Look how beautiful that is. Now it, of course, updates everything else from there. And we can get into formatting the dates a little better. I'll do that in a future video. For now, I want to start getting into what we laid out here. So um, let's go back here. And let's see. So rent, we said, was going to be $750 a month, right? So we're just going to punch that in. Let's go back to 1116. And I always like to start this off at the beginning of a year, even if I'm midway into the year like we are now. As of the day I'm recording this, it's April, right? So let's say we're going to start this in May. So I'm just going to punch that in. And on the next one, I'm going to set it equal to whatever is to my left, right? Because rent is going to be the same every month. We might want to assume an increase after a year, right? So if we started in May, we might want to go out to May of 20. 17 and say, okay, let's say it's going to go up to maybe $800 a month at that point, right? And notice because of the way I wrote the formula, I can go at any point in the timeline, update the amount and everything from there to the right will update accordingly because it's all set equal, right? Now let's look at the software developer salaries. So if we said that the mean salary was 68,000 and that's per employee, and of course that's annual. So let's say annual per employee. 
So we'll start out off simple and say we just need one software developer. And then in a future video, probably the next one, I'll show you how to build out a schedule where you can look at maybe I need two or three software developers. So we can create a separate schedule just for software developers and flow that into our model. And you'll start to see how this comes together that with, a, an, with the initial setup and some time spent up front doing it and doing it smart, you'll have a template where you can easily punch in numbers and update scenarios and see what it's going to take to keep this thing alive until you can bring your product to market. It. So uh, that's annual per employee. So what's we'll just keep it simple. Sixty-eight thousand divided by twelve. There's your monthly salary. So fifty-six sixty-seven. Let's call it. Right. Good enough for government work. Let's paste that in. And again, we're just going to set everything else equal to whatever's to our left. Computer equipment we said would be, let's say, one-time cost. And again, I'm just throwing numbers in here. Let's say we're going to outfit our own office, whatever it might be. We want to buy a bunch of laptops for people and anything else we may need, hard drives, you know, you name it. So let's just say it's 10000 Again, you can change the numbers. And that's going to be a one-time cost, right? We may want to figure in periodically, you know, we go to Best Buy, we buy some updated stuff, some mobile devices, whatever we need. Right, So that's the beauty of laying this out on a timeline is not only do you plan the amount, but you're planning when it's going to need to be spent. So maybe we figure six months in we're going to have to purchase some upgraded equipment, right? So two, three, four, five, six, and we'll put in like $1,000 for that. Right, And you can start to sort of see how this is going to come together. Now accounting, a lot of you tend to ignore this in the beginning and think, oh, we'll deal, we'll deal with that later. But you're smart to deal with it up front. So let's say the accounting, $1,500 annually, would be for like your CPA or your enrolled agent to prepare your taxes and do what they need along those lines. Assuming you form a legal entity, which is a smart thing to do for a number of reasons, then uh, your tax return for an LLC or an S-Corp or whatever you've set up will likely cost around $1,500. That and all the other accounting services that go along with it. So that's going to happen, let's say, annually every April. You're going to need to spend that. So not in the first year, but certainly in the second. So we put that in there under April. And we're going to format this to make this look pretty after this. Now we have bookkeeping. Now, again, I would encourage that you would start want to start doing the bookkeeping right away. And you want to do it right. So you don't want to look for a cheap solution. You want to look for a solution where you're going to have somebody who's keeping track of all this. And as I mentioned in the previous write-up and video, as soon as you can, you're going to want to get into something like QuickBooks Online. But assuming that we're bootstrapping, and especially if we have to spend money on this other kind of stuff, Google Sheets is a perfect alternative until you get to a place where you can afford the, uh, the actual accounting software. Uh, legal fees, again, we're going to probably pay somebody, you know, let's say a grand for the initial setup forming that legal entity and whatever else needs to get done, right? So that's why I put up legal fees, $1,000 setup one time. Hopefully we don't need an attorney beyond that. Hopefully we don't get sued. <laughs> Um, we may need to pay an attorney to form contracts, especially like the contract with the software developer. So you want to think about all this and factor that in. And then we said phones and utilities, $250 monthly each. So again, in the starting month, 250 250 Set the next one equal to the one to the left. I can copy and paste that down. Then I highlight them, Control-C. Control-Shift-Right arrow, as you notice, highlights everything across. Control-V pastes it all in. So now let's see what my totals look like each month equals sum open parentheses up arrow shift up arrow that's how you select a range so the first up arrow by itself got you into the cell immediately above where you're writing the formula then shift up arrow kind of anchored it from where you were to the top so you can select the entire range close parentheses enter so this way I'm showing you not just how to write the formulas but how to write them quickly and now let's get this all formatted for numbers make it look a little prettier and then we're going to freeze some rows and columns so we can always see what we're looking at here. So let's go view, freeze, we'll say one row, and view, freeze, and we'll say one column. All right, and let's get rid of this column. I don't need that. All right, and now we can bold this, maybe even give it a little shading so that it stands out, that it's a total. Right? Sometimes I even like to use a little different font color just to really make my total stand out. So now we're starting to get a, a, a sense of the picture of what we're going to need to start out. We're going to need about 20 grand to start out if, we're, if, if this is the true scenario and model. And then after that, it looks like we're going to need about 7400 a month. 
right? And then we factored in for the taxes, so that's going to jump up at a certain point. So let's say that now we want to see what we need cumulatively between now and the end of 2017. We'll just write a simple formula. The first month, I'll say, is set equal to whatever the total expenses are. Then we say equals, take the previous month, which is whatever's to my left, and add to it the current month. And now I can copy that across. So this tells me that cumulatively, the first month I need 18,000, then I need another 7,000, and another 7,000, and so on. So that if I wanted to raise money to fund this project right off the bat, right out of the gate, and I was going to, let's say, friends and family because it's too soon to get VC funding, then in order to carry me through to the end of 2017, based on this model, and like I said, this is by no means exhaustive, exhaustive we would need $162,000. And what I would tell my client if somebody were hiring me to help them put this analysis together is I'd say, let's not screw around. If we think it's 162, it's always going to wind up being more. So let's just look for a quarter of a million in financing to get started on a project like this. Either that or we go back and say, okay, no, let's really bootstrap this, right? So let's say we don't need the $10,000 in equipment. Well, now that's still, we still need 152. I'd still say we're looking for, you know, 250,000. This means that everybody brings their own equipment. The software developer that we hire brings his own computer and so on. Right? Um, maybe we don't form the legal entity. Uh, maybe we do without the bookkeeping. But you see what you can do by doing this is you can start eliminating stuff and playing around with scenarios. And maybe you have a goal. Maybe you already know that you can get 100000 from somewhere, which means you have to chisel this model down to make sure that you know 100000 is what this is going to amount to and probably something sub substantially less because, like I said, it's always more than you think. And this also, keep in mind, assumes that it's going to take us the better part of two years to you know be ready to let's say go to market and start earning revenue the truth is you should build this model out based on an assumption that sometime before the end of the period is when you'll be able to go to market and start actually driving some revenues for your product or your app or whatever it is that you are trying to bring to market as a startup um, i'm just going to control z this all the way back till we get it back to where we were there we go. So there's my 162,000. So this, my friends, is your second step. What I want you to do is take what you did when you did your little sketch and break out the other tab and start filling it in. Add in lines if you need to. And like I said, if you're interested in getting a copy of the template so you can play around with this and use it to develop your own model, then just come over here, right here on SethDavid.com. Go to Contact Seth and fill out this really quick, gorgeous little form here. Uh, give me your name, your company, your email, your phone. Explain how I can help you. Just mention in the comments that you would like the template for accounting for startups. And I'll give you access to make a copy of this in Google Sheets so that you can use it for yourself. And of course, as I roll out more videos and the template evolves, any given time, you can just click that same link and get the updated sort of more evolved template because I am going to be building and expanding upon this before I start getting into how to use QuickBooks Online for startups. That, my friends, is more than enough, I think, for this second segment on accounting for startups. As always, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, feedback, post them in the comments below, wherever you happen to be watching this. If you're on YouTube, check the description for a link over to the write-up so you can actually read because I always put extra information in the write-up that's not necessarily covered in the video that I think you'll find valuable and useful. And of course, if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe on YouTube, follow me on Twitter, and do all that great social stuff that's going to help me, especially if you like the content. If you find it useful and valuable, then the way that you can help me is by spreading the word. As always, I hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day, and I look forward to seeing you on the web.